kids are going to come on. Because when, when it comes to adult time, they always disconnect. They don't even want to listen. Why are you making that face? Bow down and worship Him. Worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Bow down and worship Him. Worship. Bow down and enter in, enter in, oh, enter in, bow down and enter in. 
enter in, enter in. Oh, enter in. Consume me, fire, sweet perfume. He is awesome. Consuming fire, God, sweet perfume, His awesome presence fill this room. This is holy ground. This is holy ground this is holy this is holy ground so I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Oh, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Let us read or repeat the affirmation of our faith. Exodus 20, verse 8 through 11, together. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Amen. Amen. Praise God from in your courts only because of you yeah. 
and for you. We ask, O oh God, that you will come divinely close unto us as we worship you today. Yes. As we remember you in our remembrance and communion service today, O oh God. Yes. We ask that you will send just a little more angels to dwell with us. Bless us, every man, woman, boy, and girl, in house and out of house, as we worship you today. We recommit ourselves and put this service and ourselves into your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Let us be seated, please. Good morning, church. Good morning. Isn't it wonderful to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on, if God has been good to you, let me hear you shout amen out there. Amen. If he's put food on the table, clothes on your back. If he's kept a shelter over your head. Huh? If he keeps the warm blood running warm through your veins into your brains, we have plenty of reason to worship God this morning in the beauty of his holiness. That's why I like to sing that song that pumps life and energy into our bodies. Come on, let's do it. Let's get some life in the place. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, let's do it in order now. We're going to keep, remember, this is section A. This is section B. Is a hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We want some energy up in here. When the church is dead, God is displeased. And when the church is dead, I feel like dying. So I want some life in the house of the Lord today. What do you say there? Come on, let's hit it. One, two, three, go. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Stand up, get some energy in you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's sing it. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Together, everyone. Praise ye the Lord. Let's try it one more time. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Let's sing it. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye. Amen, amen. I'll tell you, I'll tell you all the time, I, say, I really wish I had a voice to sing. You do. I'm telling you, sometimes I just want to shout out, but I don't want to destroy. Just make a joyful stream. noise. I don't want to destroy the stream, you know what I'm saying, Sister Bellington? But I can feel the excitement, I can feel the fire just roaring in my blood, but I don't have that gift, that ability, like Elder Thomas, like Lucius Pavarotti, like some of us who could really truly sing. To the glory of God. So that's why I say if you can sing, you got to help me out. You got to help me bellow it out when we come up yes, to sir. sing that song. Yes, sir. Because God is good. All the time. And all the time our God is indeed incredible. This evening at five, we're going to have our virtual communion service. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I'm sure that the host of you are as well as those also who are viewing by way of the stream. We're going to continue in our worship to God and appreciation for the sacrament, for his death, his life, which he asked us to do in remembrance of him Amen. until when, everybody? Until he comes. comes again. Until he comes. So I just want to say to you, we love you from the bottom of our hearts, in spite of what's taking place in this whole world of ours. There's so much confusion, so much stuff going on. The servant of the Lord says that man's greatest sin is his inhumanity towards his fellow man. Huh? When you don't have compassion, when you don't have love, when you're just devoid of what it takes to be a decent human being, that's a problem. And when the world has reached this point, we know that soon and very soon, what everybody, we are going to see the king. Time is running out. The last sand particles of the hourglass are passing through. And we have to, by the grace of God, see to it 
that our calling and election is positive. It's left with each one of us to aspire to God's holiness, to be transformed, to be regenerated so that we can be prepared and ready to meet Jesus when he comes. Let me see the hands of those of you who want to be ready to meet Jesus when he comes. Okay. Let me see the hands of those of you who are very like super happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I, I am, I'm super happy to be here. Happy to worship the Lord. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go away, everybody. Yeah, not to ShopRite, not to Macy's, but into the house of the Lord. This is where we belong. He said, enter into his case with what? And, and into his house with praise. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Because God is a wonderful God. And he's my best friend. I'm not ashamed of him. I love to declare his praises. And we have this opportunity in the land of the living. Because many, for many, my friends, it's too late. This opportunity doesn't exist anymore. For the Bible says that the dead praise not God, neither any that go down into the pit. So it's now while we are alive, Brother Justin, and it's super good to see you out today, that we have this opportunity and privilege to make known our sentiments to God, the foundation of our lives, the center of it all. I love him from the bottom of my heart, don't you? It's a wonderful God. I wish sometimes I could just physically embrace him and give him a big bear hug. And, but it's, I know he feels sorry for me because <laughs> he's a spirit and I'm in the flesh. And uh, sometimes I weep because I wish I could do it. I don't know about you, but I wish I could do that sometimes. Uh, don't, don't you ever, don't make me look like I need to be institutionalized. Don't you ever feel like that yourself? Sometimes folks where you could just wish you could just get your hands on him and give him a big bear hug. Happy are those people that are in such a case. Happy are those people whose God is the Lord. And it's just, just the little things that he does. The little things that he does. That's big to me. Yeah, this week I was working on a paper. And I was for my, one of my classes and I spent hours on that paper, hours on that paper. And then I said, you know, before I, I upload it to my instructor, I'm gonna print it out. So when I went over on the screen to print it out, poof, it disappeared. Hours, hours. Somebody didn't hear me. I said, somebody please feel me. Hours. And I forgot, Sister Bellington, to save it. I forgot to put that little save as and put the title in there. I went into my daughter's room because I said, these young people today, they can make miracles. So I went into my daughter's room. My daughter's really good too. And I said, Michelle, I told her what I did. And she said, you didn't save it? I said, no. She said, then, Dad, it's gone. I went into silence. I was so angry. I, I think if you were to crack an egg and put it on top of my head, it would have fried. I was so angry, the devil almost tempted me to curse. I'm, I'm just being real with you this morning. Have you ever been there before? Oh, come on, don't look too holy on me. Come on, we are sinners down here. I didn't curse. I didn't say that. I said I was hot. Ah! went down the drain and I dropped on the bed and I was I wanted to almost cry because I said come on man come I, I was really upset and I said Lord don't let the devil do it poop no I said poop when I looked at the screen so help me God eternal he could strike me right in the pulpit right now came back. It just appeared. I said, wait a minute. How could a lost document that was not saved 
come back up on the screen. I stood there for about five minutes looking to see if I went, I lost my mind or if I'm just imagining this because of the hard work and I got so upset that maybe I'm imagining that the document is there. I said, no, it came, what happened is before I went in my daughter's room, I hit the recovery button, but I'm still saying, how could it recover Ooh, without saving it? Grace, without saving it. Grace, grace. And, and you want me to come in here and worship God like, you know, nominally and easy? I can't do it. I said, I can't. Do it. It's going to be hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, my God. He's so good all the time. Even in the small, tiny little things of our lives, he will help you out if you call upon him in spirit and in truth. God bless you all as we continue to worship him according to the program. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Now, this is the way to start church service. Amen? Oh, you all sounded so good. Praise ye the Lord. And we have good reason to praise. Oh, this looks, you know, I was sitting there. So I know when I was sitting there, I didn't see what I see when I'm standing here. But again, you all look marvelous. It's just good to see you in the house of the Lord. I see people that I hadn't seen in a while. And we just want to welcome you because guess what? The Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. We're going to come together. We're going to praise the Lord. We're going to worship him on his holy Sabbath day as he commanded to do. And it's just a blessing to see you. I, I, I start calling out some names. You know, some of us spoke to you on the phone. That's good. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I'm glad to see you. I start calling names. I start calling names. I'm going to get in trouble because I, I, I'm going to leave somebody out. But each one of you, it is a blessing to see you. It's such a blessing to see you. And uh, we're going to keep on going because we have the power of God on our side. Nothing can stop us. No COVID virus can stop us. No, nothing can stop us because greater is he that is in us than he that's in this world. So it's just such a blessing. Now, I didn't come up here to exactly say that, but when I looked into your faces, it is such a true blessing. And maybe one time you'll just come up here and turn and just turn around. Maybe, she, matter of fact, why don't we just turn around and look at each other and just give each other a wave real quick, just to see us, see all of us that are in the house of God this morning. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Okay, just a few announcements. You know, in a few minutes, we're gonna be hearing from that gentleman who just let out in such a rousing song service, our pastor, Pastor Lionel Martell, as he leads us in our divine worship service with the sermon, In His Image, In His Image. And we're going to find out more about that as the service goes on. At 5 p.m., as he's already mentioned, we're going to have communion service as our commander in chief, Lord and Master, told us we to do as often as we can before he comes again. So we're going to be meeting at five o'clock online. All you have to do is go on the mass text and you will see exactly where to dial in. And we look forward to seeing us all there worshiping him together. Uh, at, um, let's see, April the uh, 2nd, I want to go jump there. April the 2nd, we got good news, good news. And I just can't tell all the good news by myself. It's like fire in my bones. You know, I just want to get out. But our lower division is going to open and we're going to start up again. Amen. The upstairs, we see us, we are coming to church, but now we're bringing our young people back. And we just, we just, those of you who weren't able to tune in to our Sabbath school this morning, you missed a blessing. Our young people, it was just amazing seeing them. They, they've matured. A couple of years makes a big difference. They've gotten taller. They've gotten deeper voices, deeper than mine, you know, and um, the, the young ladies look so beautiful. But uh, we're going we're gonna to be meeting here tomorrow to have a church cleanup. And I want all of you to know, we need all of us. Many hands make the work light. And we're only going to do it for just a, a few hours from 8 to 12 p.m. 
we're going to do this and we're going to try to clean up. We're going to, you know, there's a text. I asked my wife to find it for me. It's in, I think, Amos. But it says that, you know, how can we go to our homes that are beautiful, that are clean, that are nice? And then we come into the house of the Lord and it should be any less. Oh, no. Oh, no. So we just invite all of us. Come out, even if you don't do anything, just be here. Your presence here lets us know that we're in this together and we're gonna we're gonna clean, we're gonna clean up God's church. Shouldn't take us long because we know we of course our deacons and deaconesses have been doing a wonderful job. God bless them for the work they've been doing over the time that we've been uh in COVID. But uh we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna put some final touches on some things. But I'm gonna call her on the spur of the moment. And that's Elder Lucas just to say a word about this reopening. This reopening, this is our Sabbath school superintendent who's been working very diligently over time to get this thing going. So Elder Lucas, whatever comes to your heart. Amen, amen. To God be the glory. We thank God so much for our young people. They are the pillar, the foundation actually, because they are the ones that will carry the mantle for us and we have to encourage them we realize that they have been out for a very, very long time, but I believe it's time they return. Amen. Amen. And by the Amen. power of the Holy Spirit, I pray that we will continue to pray for our young people. Yes. Let us support them. Don't turn them away, yes. but encourage them. A little word goes a long, long way. And let it be seen in our, not only in our words, but in our thoughts and in our action. We have missed them, and so we're looking forward to seeing them next Sabbath. I do pray that as you see them, just don't pass them by. Amen. Just stop and encourage them. Give them a word, a word of hope, and welcome them as they come. Perhaps maybe somebody or someone is thinking of a little token or a little gift for them. Whatever God impresses upon your mind, let us show how much we appreciate our young people. And we're looking forward to seeing them. The fact that they're going out to school and they're in the community, it's time that they come back to God's house where together amen. we can worship in spirit and in truth. Amen, amen. Thank you, Elder Lucas, thank you. Uh, tonight at 8 p.m., those of our couples, we're having our couple meeting and uh, all are welcome. You can also check the mass text. It'll tell you exactly where to call in. And uh, so we look forward to meeting at 8 p.m. this evening after our communion service. And then tomorrow, March 27th, we are having another uh, episode, so to speak, another training session with the Lay School of Evangelism. That's going to take place online. It goes from 4 to 7 p.m. I know I've been seeing people from Spring Valley on the line. And there we will learn how to give Bible studies. We will learn how to reach people on an individual le level. And so all of us are welcome. And if you haven't come, you can still come. Because whatever you may have missed, the conference says that you can just, we can call the number and we can give you the tapes of whatever you missed. So, and I think they even have a manual that's going to have all of them. So we just want, they're just arming all of us to go out and do this work. Jesus is coming again, and we have, God is going to use us. He's going to use you and me to go tell somebody, and you can reach people that I can't reach, and I can reach people that you can't reach. But we need to be armed, and we need to be just given uh, to knowing how we do use our talents for the best. So also going forward, we're going to just say that um, a congratulations is in order. Congratulations, or she may be a little surprised to hear this, but um, we just found out, and, and others are going to hear more about this as time goes on. Sister Janine Amin is no longer sis, just Sister Amin, Sister Janine Amin. She is now Doctor. Uh, Janine Amin. She just earned her doctorate, and we just want to say congratulations to her for all of her hard work, and so God has blessed her. We've been pretty blessed around this church with some educated folks, and you know, it's, God is just blessing, and so we just say congratulations to her, and we're all educated. Just all we have to do is just yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit, and he's going to educate us, but when people do a special work, we just want to, you know, congratulate them for that. And I see in the audience someone else who's going to be graduating or, or maybe graduated, Jason, Jason Bridgewater. Come on, stand up, brother. Stand up, young man. Stand up. Stand up. 
We're proud of you. We're proud of you. This young man is going to be a registered nurse very soon. And uh, we just remember when you just come in the door and didn't have any of that. Now God has blessed you with that. And so we, we just said, and I, I was told, I don't know if I see her sister, um, Sarah, Sarah, is she here, Sister Sarah? She's not here. Is Sister Jane here? Is Sister Jane, is Jane here, Jane? Oh, she's not here. Somebody told me she was here. Well, let me just see, Are we have any other young people here? Any of our young people? Not that us old people don't count, but do we have any other young people? Just stand where you are. I see Abraham, little brother Abraham, stand up, young man. We're glad you're in the house of the Lord. And who's that young lady right there? I can't tell with masks, right behind Sister uh, Fighter. Who is that? Okay, that's all right. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Good to see you in the house of the Lord, young man. Keep coming. And because the, the father and son connection there. And boy, they look marvelous. Oh, my goodness. You just got to stop and get a picture of them when you see them. And, and then we're all looking good. So thank you, young man. You can have a seat. Thank you so much. Okay, so with that being said, we just want to remember to pray for the sick. We have to keep praying for each other because you know what? Our prayers are being answered. Our prayers are being answered. When I think, when I, what am I talking about? Mother Wynette Drisdale, we've been praying for her. And I'm hearing each week, it's getting better. She's up, she's up, she's up one day, and she's getting stronger each day. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Yes, we're praying for Sister Carmen Gray. And I see her in the house of the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Only God could do that, you know. And then we see we have to keep praying for Sister uh, Daphne Davis. You, let's keep her in prayer. She was in the hospital not too long ago. We've been praying. And now she's in a nursing home now. She's doing pretty well. Uh, we have to go out and visit, continue to call, continue to pray, and lift her up in prayer. And then there's Brother Sidney Paris. We're still praying for him. I, I'm waiting for the day when he come back and sit next to his beautiful bride, Sister Paris. I know she misses him, and um, it won't be long. We're going to continue to pray for him. And then I just want to briefly, and then I'm going to sit down, just shout out a few uh, birthdays. You know, we want to remember you, even if we don't see you here, we're going to call your name when your birthday comes and just let you know we're praying for you. Uh, we did that for uh, someone and they stopped me. They said, yeah, well, thank you for calling my name and, and calling my son's name. And, you know, I'm going to go over and find him and we're going to pray together again. But uh, brother Serge Jumas had a birthday. I do it for the week, the week of March 20th through the 26th. Brother Serge Jumas just had a birthday. Amen. Praise the Lord. I miss seeing him here, but praise the Lord. I trust he's doing okay. Praise the Lord. He's doing okay. See his beautiful wife here as well. So, okay, now we have uh, Brother Johnny Albert. Brother Johnny Albert just celebrated a birthday on the 24th. And also Tyler Bernard celebrated a birthday on Tuesday, the 22nd. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. God is good, amen? All the time, God is good. So we just give thanks. We give thanks that we could be here in this house. If I didn't call your name, it's not because I couldn't. But, you know, if I get started, I'll be here and I'm going. Then I'll probably call everybody's name but that one person I didn't call. But it's just so good to see you in the house of the Lord. Uh, Brother Justy, good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> I'm getting started. You're getting me started. Do we have any visitors among us? Any visitors? Please stand, young lady, and just, just give us your name and where you're coming from. Praise the Lord all the way from Canada. Oh, and, and that beautiful young lady must be yours. Oh, what's her name? Hi, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. Welcome, welcome. And please do not make this your last time. Thank you for visiting us all the way from Canada. So may God continue to bless us and let us just continue to remember it. The gates of hell will not prevail against his church. Let us keep coming. Let us keep praising him. Let us keep praying for one another and everything will fall right into place. God bless you. The first Passover happened when God's people left Egypt long ago. After that, 
God's people celebrated the Passover every year. One year, Jesus and his closest followers traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. On the way, Jesus said, Go into town and find a young donkey colt. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone asks where you are taking it, say, The master needs it. When the men got back with the donkey colt, they spread their coats on its back and Jesus climbed on. The donkey started to clippity-clop through the town. People came running. They threw their coats down for the donkey to walk on. They took palm branches and waved them in the air. They shouted. Some of them remembered the scriptures that said, Your king is coming, sitting on a colt of a donkey. That night, it was time for the Passover dinner. Jesus and his closest followers gathered in a big room. Jesus stood up, took off his coat, got some water in a wash bowl, and wrapped a towel around his waist. Then he started washing his followers' feet. Jesus did this to show his friends they were to serve one another. While Jesus and his closest followers were eating the Passover dinner, Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it. He broke the bread apart and said, This bread is my body. Take and eat it to remember me. Next, he took a cup and said, This is my blood. When you drink this, remember me. Jesus knew this would be his last meal with his followers because he was about to be killed. He wanted his friends to always remember him. Amen, our amen. To continue our worship service today, we are going to take our hymnals, or most likely it's going to be on the screen, and sing hymn number 306, Draw Me Nearer. Hymn number 306. Kindly stand as we blend our voices together. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith, and be closer, closer to thee. Draw me nearer, draw me nearer. song dragging the song we're gonna put some life and energy maybe just a little bit more life and energy into us because what i am what thine oh lord you've been so good to me let's really praise god can we put a smile on his face this morning what do you say out there on this is all. let's sing it with life and vigor now the thomas could you please lead us out once again but let's start off here on the Whatever, just life and vigor we pray. Come on, let's go one more time, one more time. I am thine, O oh Lord. I am thine, O oh Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise. 
but I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. So draw me nearer, nearer, closer, glory to the cross where thy today which is found in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 27. Genesis 1 26 and 27 and we can read together. So it's also on the screen. Together and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them amen and i trust amen. that god is going to add a blessing to the reading of his holy word and at this time we are going to go into prayer we serve an awesome god amen i said we serve an awesome God. Amen. We serve a great and mighty, powerful God. Amen. A God that we can come to anytime, anywhere, anyhow, any place, knowing that he is with us. And so as we come to him today, we just want to give him praise. Amen. 
We want to give him thanks. We want to glorify. We want to honor our Lord and Savior because he's worthy. Worthy. Worthy is the lamb that was slain for you and for me. He brought us here today, not by chance, but we are here because of his grace and because of his mercy. Some didn't make it, but I thank God that we are in the land of the living and the word of God reminds us that let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. So we have bread this morning and what we can do but give God praise, give him honor and give him the glory that is due unto his holy name. So at this time, before we go and bend the knees to pray, we're going to have our prayer song at this time. Now, dear Lord, as we pray, take our sermons far away from the press of the world all around to your throne where grace does abound. May our lives be transformed by your love. May our souls be refreshed from above. At this moment, let people everywhere join us now as we come to you in prayer. Let us go and bend the knees as we seek the Lord in prayer. Come every soul of sin oppressed. There's mercy with the Lord, and he will surely give us rest by trusting in his word. Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him now. Why? Because he will save us, and he will save us now. Loving God, everlasting Father, wonderful, mighty, Victorious, conqueror, soon coming king, omnipotent God, omniscient God, omnipresent God, Alpha, Omega, yes, soon coming king. God, you are worthy, worthy of our praise and worthy of our thanks. Today, dear God, we come into your presence giving you praise and giving you thanks because you are the only true God, the one that is worthy, worthy. And this morning, dear God, your people have assembled into your courts to give you praise and to give you honor. Yes. Father God, you love us with an everlasting love. And that is why we are here today, dear God, in your courts. And so, God, we want to invite your sweet Holy Spirit to be with us. I pray this morning, dear God, that you will move in a mighty way. Move in every pew. Touch your people once again, God, as together we lift our hearts heavenward to give you praise and to give you thanks. Oh, Father God, we thank you for who you are. Lord, here we are as your people. Unworthy though we are, we thank you, God, for your grace and for your mercy. Because your grace is sufficient. And so as we come, we ask now, dear God, to be with us and guide us in every thought, in every word, and in every action. The song reminds us, there is a fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's vein. And sinners, here we are, God, plunge beneath your flood, lose all of our guilty states. And God, we thank you so much for the blood, that blood that washes us and make us whiter than snow. Father God, we thank you for Jesus who was willing to go to the cross for your sins and for mine. And that is why, dear God, we know that because when we look at the cross and we see our Savior hanging there, Father God, blood dripping. Oh God, we can say there is power in the blood in the blood of oh God, there is victory. 
In the blood, dear God, there is deliverance. God, there is power because you're the mighty conqueror. And so we come this morning, dear God, thanking you for the cross. God, we thank you for who you are. Sinners though we be, God, we can say what a mighty God we serve. Lord God, you have provided for us this week. You have given us jobs, God. You have given us food and clothing and shelter. God, you have given us friends and families. You have given us a job. God, you've given us health. You've given us strength. Father God, we can see you. God, we can move. We can feel. God, we can touch. God, we can say what a God you are. So many times we complain and complain that we don't have the finances. But God, we are rich because of your grace and your mercy. No money can buy health. No money can buy peace. No money can buy salvation, but you, God, you came and you paid the price. And so today, God, we lift our hearts and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah to our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father God, again we come, nothing in our hands we bring, but simply to the cross we cling. And so as we cling to that cross, God, I pray this morning that you will hold us up, lift us up, dear God. Oh, God, make a standard, put up a standard against the enemy. Because, Lord, you said in your word that he has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I thank God this morning that you have come to give us life and that you've come to give us more abundantly. And so this morning we say thank you for who you are and the blessings God that you have bestowed upon us so help us God not to complain but help us to be thankful and to be grateful Lord God I looked this week and I saw war war torn zones father people are running for rescue but rescue can only come in Jesus Christ oh father God there is a war raging but that war is temporary. But I thank God that a day you're going to put an end to all of this. And we are looking forward to that day, God, when you will step in and step up and show up for your people, oh, Father. Lord, we thank you this morning and we praise your holy name. Oh, Father God, again, here we are as your children calling upon your most matchless name because you are a holy God. You're a righteous God. You're the one that can speak, Lord, and it will be done. That's the power that you have. And so this morning, dear God, I pray as your children that we will tap into the resources that you have available for us. Oh, Father, I pray that you will cover each and every one of us with your robe of righteousness today and make us realize, dear God, how blessed we are just to be in the land of the living today. Lifting your name, we can walk into your courts today, dear God, and we can bless your holy name. Father, we bring before you our children. They are indeed a heritage from you lord we have seen them this morning some have grown some voices have changed but lord that's what you do for your people and i just want to give you praise and thanks for them i pray now dear god that your holy spirit will continue to abide with them and bless them abundantly father god we're looking forward to see all of them next sabbath by your grace and i pray dear god that as they come lord let them come with holy boldness come to worship you in spirit and in truth father god it's not about us it's all about you and i pray this morning that you will shelter our children protect them dear god from the wiles of the enemy we see how many times the enemy tried to snatch them but greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world and so god we place them into your hands we place ourselves into your hands and we say thank you for what you will do for them and will continue to do lord again we bring before you the prayer box that is in front of us today and i know dear god that you hear and that you answer because you're the same god and what you've done in the past god we know that you will do for us and so lord in this box 
There are so many complaints. There are so many distresses and griefs. But God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God, for answered prayers. Because we are claiming your promises. And we are claiming your victory. Lord, we thank you also for those that were ill, Father God. But Lord, they are still giving you praise and thanks in spite of what they went through. Lord God, again, we remember Mama Drisdale. Lord, we thank you, thank you, thank you for the way that you have led her and continue to lead her. Sister Davis, God, we bring before you also. And I pray now, dear God, that your Holy Spirit will reach down where she is even now and give her that peace that passeth all understanding. Oh, Father God, again, we remember Brother Paris. Lord God, he's, he's nursing a, a sick hand. But Lord, we pray now that your hand will reach down and touch his hand. And in unity, dear God, bring healing. We thank you, God, for who you are and the things that you continue to do for us. Praise be to the name of the Lord God Most High. Lord, we bring before you your church, said in your word that your church will stand triumphant. And no matter what weapon the enemy wants to put, to us, no weapon, God, that form against your people will prosper. And so today we place your church into your hands. We place every leader, Father God, and we know, dear God, that you will be with us in all that we do and all that we say. Praise God that you give us faithful minds and faithful hearts. Help us now, dear God, to keep our minds fixed and focus on you. Lord God, there is a word for your people today. Lord God, I pray that you will anoint every word, anoint your servant, dear Father, Pastor Martel, by name. Father God, we've been hearing him over and over and over again. And the more he comes, the more blessed we are. Lord God, I pray that these messages will not only resonate with us, but we will spread the word that Jesus is coming again and that he is coming soon. So, Father God, I pray that you will anoint the pastor from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. God, and as he speaks, oh, Father God, let it be your words coming from the throne. Lord God, again, here we are, giving you praise and thanks for your greatness towards us. And so, Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the thanks because you are an awesome God. You are a true God and you're worthy, worthy of our praise. Help us now, dear God, to be faithful and to keep trusting you even where we cannot trace you. We thank you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Incline thine ears to us and grant us thy Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. 
Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hands of the enemy, and gathered them out of the land from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way. They might go to a city of a habitation. Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with goodness, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebel against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their hearts with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then the cry, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, so that there may be meat in my house, said the Lord of hosts. Let us now bow for prayer. Our Father and our God, which art in heaven. It is just a privilege to come before your presence to worship you in spirit and in truth. We just thank you, Father God, for being so good and so faithful to us. Lord, we thank you for providing for us the energy to go and to work and for the opportunity that you have given us to come and to return to you what you have blessed us with our tithes and our offerings. Lord, we just pray that you would bless it and multiply it and help that as it is used, may it will be used to glorify your name and your name alone. We pray that you will bless those who are able to give and those who they have any, we just pray that you will bless them so that next time they'll be able to bring an offering to you. We just want to thank you for being so good. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, doing, and will continue to do for us. These mercies are asked in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We give thee but thine own, whatever gifts may be, all that we are is thine own. Ashras, O Lord, from thee. Amen. You may be seated. Normally I don't do this, but I just felt constrained to do it at this very moment. You know, somebody said you can't be God's given. No matter what, everybody, how hard you try. Because the more what? The more you give is going to be what? The more he gives to you. Last Sunday, we met with the board and we reviewed the reports from the uh, finance committee, which was sent up to the board for review. And then we have to have a business meeting for them to be rubber stamped. But we can see from these reports and from, you know, just our regular board meetings 
that we could probably use a little bit more help in the sustaining of God's house. What do you say out there? That's why I say that uh, you really can't beat God's given. When we lift God's house out of debt, when you help to lift God's house out of debt, what do you think? I just got a, just a quick question. What do you think is going to happen to your house? When you bless God's house, what do you think is going to happen to your house? When you help to lift God's house out of debt, what do you think is going to happen to your house? He's going to lift you out of debt. That's because you cannot beat God's giving. You cannot outgive God. You can't do it, no matter how hard you try. So that's not the sermon today, but that is encouragement. Maybe from next week on, including myself, let's try to give a little bit more to the house of God. We're not trying to put extraneous pressure on anybody. Times are difficult, times are hard, but we do serve a God who is, I, I'll just remind you again, who will not allow you to outgive him.
Your presence is heaven to me. Uh, I have the opportunity to present to you the messenger of God who will bring to us at this time what God has prepare for us today. When we come to churches and every Sabbath, I'm pretty sure that we come with in mind that when we leave this place, we will live different than the way we came. Because we know that in the God's presence, we will be blessed. And at this time, God has sent a special messenger to us who happened to be none other than the shepherd of the flock, Pastor Lionel Martel by name. Pastor Martel is the one that takes care of this flag with such, such, with, with a, such a love that, you know, you, you, you would not want to miss him, you know, when we come here on the Sabbath. God has blessed him with a gift of preaching the word. And I said that before, when he's preaching the word of God, he's not only using 
his vocal, his mouth. But the Lord also has blessed him with such an energy when he delivers the word that he would also, you know, not only speak the word, but he activate the word in his body, the way that he moves. So we just want to thank God for using him Sabbath after Sabbath. And I just want to ask of you to pray for him when he comes to us and to open up your heart so that the sweet Holy Spirit of God would tabernacle in, in you so that we'll be able to receive the message that the Lord has, has prepared for us today. But before he comes to us, we're going to be blessed by a special song that's coming by the, the triplets. That is entitled. I saw it before. What a God. <laughs> Thank you. What a God. So sit down and listen. And then the next word that we'll hear after that will be none other of, but of our pastor, the shepherd of the flock, Pastor Lionel Martel by name. God bless you. Thank you. 
Sometimes when you see me hesitate, <clears throat> you probably don't see that happen in the pulpit too often. It's because I do not believe that when we enter into the presence of God, I do not believe that we should rush anything. You shouldn't rush in the presence of God. What did God command us to do? What did God say? God says, when you enter into my presence, do what? He said, be what? Be still and know that I am God. So sometimes when you are preparing to worship God, just like how when you're preparing a meal, a delicious meal, a sumptuous meal, you do what? Take time to prepare it. People don't just run, just run into marriage. You take your time and you get to know another person. Amen. Some of us ran into it. And guess what? We won't go there. That's not my message for today. But when we come to meet with God, to commune with our creator and our best friend, you want to take time to be holy. Speak off with thy Lord. Abide in him always and feast on his word. God's children, help those who are weak, forgetting in nothing what everybody his blessing to seek. Heavenly Father, once again, today, O oh Lord, we come into your presence with the oil of gladness. We're happy to be here. We're happy to be your children. We're happy to worship you. We're happy to magnify and to glorify your name. Happy are those people that are in such a case. <laughs> Yea, happy are those people whose God is the Lord. What a wonderful God he is. What a wonderful God. Our subject this morning is entitled, The Image of God, the image of God. That's a powerful concept in and of itself. For the scripture says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. And he blessed them. And he gave them dominion over the entire world. All the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, and over every living thing that creepeth upon the surface of the planet. Man, this is a very unique, a very special being to God. And God has a big heart of love filled, hmm? filled with love for sinful man. Love and compassion. This is who we're talking about. A God who cares about you. And he really genuinely cares about you. People will tell you how much they love you, how much they care. This, that, all, they'll sing all these songs to you and all these lyrics. And when push comes to shoving, when you need them the most, 
you realize that there is only one who really, who truly, who genuinely hears and loves you, watches over you, provides for you, protects you, sustains you, and his name is. That's why Sister Thomas loves to sing that song. Was that song you love to sing in prayer meeting every week when we used to have it here physically? There's no talk to me, Sister Thomas. There's what? There's no come on talk. Let us let the chills run down my spine. What? There's what? There's there's no other name like Jesus. Lily of the valley, bright and morning star, fairest of ten thousand. My best friend, my Lord. And my God. Now, last Sabbath, we touched on the holiness of God, a subject I tell you, I have absolutely no right to speak on. I feel very uncomfortable as a member of the human race touching on the holiness of God. Whether in the pulpit or outside of the pulpit, I am a sinful being. I am a sinful man. When I think about God, when I look about God, when I look to God, it's like tears just want to burn to my eyes because God is so holy. God is so holy. The only way you cannot feel it is, is if you're drifting away or something has happened to your relationship with God. But if you're in the right relationship with God, whenever you think of him and his holiness, something is going to happen to you. So last Sabbath, we touched on the holiness of God. It therefore follows that this Sabbath, we need to touch on the holiness of man. Why? Because God said, you and you and you and you and you must be holy. Why, everybody? Because I, God says, am holy. So let's go backwards for a brief review. Then we'll go forward into our subject for today. You must be holy, God says, because I, the Lord your God, am a holy God. You see, folks, the holiness of God cannot be housed in mere mortal human language or accurately articulated by a human silver and gold rattling tongue. We said that uh, no man can really describe it. At least no man in the flesh. Because it is indescribable. It is inconceivable. It is incomprehensible. It is matchless. It is unfathomable. It is inexhaustible. It is unimaginable. It is irresistible. And it is impossible to fully digest it, to fully appreciate it, to fully embrace it in the flesh, the holiness of God. We think we can because we are sinful. If we were free from sin, we would never think we can. The closer we draw to God, as sinners, is the farther we feel away from him. I said the closer we draw to God and the Holy Spirit peels the scales off of our eyes. is the clearer we see him and therefore the farther we feel away from him. We said to you last Sabbath, that angel about the throne, cry around the clock, holy, 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 holy is his name. His nature, his character, the station of the triune Godhead is holy. The Bible says, though clouds and darkness are round about him, that righteousness and judgment are the foundation of his throne. His work is perfect. All his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without 
any sorts of iniquity. Just and right is he. God. Holiness and righteousness exudes from him, from off of his person, like the rays of the sun. Whatever he touches, he makes holy. The mountaintop becomes a holy place when God is there. God said to Moses, take off your shoes from off your feet. For the place whereon thou standest is what everybody. And when the Lord is in his holy temple, God says do what? Let all the earth keep silence before him because God has showed up. The Hebrew word for holy literally means to separate or to set apart. That's important, my friend. Because when you make up your mind that you're going to live holy for Christ from here on out, you have to realize that you are making up your mind to live a separated life, a life of distinction. This, this sacrifice, this decision, this determination might mean that there are certain friends and relatives and neighbors that you can't associate with anymore. There's certain conversations you can't have anymore. There's certain phone calls you can't make anymore. There's certain places you can't go anymore. And there's certain things, Brother Lucas, we can't eat anymore. Let the church say amen out there. It means to set apart. This is helpful for us because it means that at least in part, that when we're talking about God's holiness, we're talking about his absolute purity. He is unstained and untainted by sin and evil, amen? He is perfect in every way and perfectly good all the time. The Lord is righteous, the psalmist says, in all his ways and very holy in all his works. The root meaning of holiness has to do with obedience, separation, distinction. We said that the ability to discern and to make difference is of the utmost importance to us. The ability to make distinction between the clean and the unclean. Our health message, moral standards, physical habits, Distinction, separation, difference is the key. You see, God says, do what? Come out from among them and be what everybody, separate. Then God says, I will receive you unto myself. But until you make up your mind, God says, to separate from certain things. He cannot be united to you. He cannot live in you fully. He cannot execute his purposes and his plan for your life. God says, be holy because I am holy. That's what God says. We like the story of Midas. You know, who had the Midas touch, everything he touched turned to gold. But that's a myth. When I tell you that God has a holy touch, it's real. Ain't no fairy tale out of a, out of a fiction book. Let the church say amen out there. Huh? It means that everything that God touches, actually, physically, literally touches, huh? He makes holy. Everything. Everything he touches, he makes holy. If he touches a people, they become a holy people. If he touches a place, it becomes a holy place. If he touches a day, it becomes a holy day. If he gets into time, it becomes holy time. If he touches a tenth of your money, it becomes holy money. All articles of the sanctuary are holy. And that's why we have to pray over them when we purchase them. When we receive them from others or from, from, from wherever it came from as a gift. Because... They are holy. And when they enter into this place, they are to be used for a holy purpose. Let the church say, 
holy, holy, holy is his name. Holy is his name. Last week we mentioned to you that all creation came forth from a holy being, from perfect holiness. This world of ours is a mistake, but not on God's part. On our part, what we see going down in our world today was never a part of God's original plan or ideal for planet Earth. That's why he's going to destroy this old world of ours and make it over again. Where you won't, you will not be living in a world where you have lunatics like Putin and other uh, pontifical dictators destroying the world. I'm not afraid to say so publicly, privately, or otherwise. Taking the lives needlessly of innocent men, women, boys and girls, and babies. Jesus, Lord, have mercy. What kind of devil are you? You can't have no heart to kill a child. If you could kill a child, may God have mercy on you. God will visit you. God said, if you touch one of these little ones, that it were better for you that they put a, a millstone around your neck tight and cast the millstone into the heart of the ocean, take you right along with it down huh? to the floor of the ocean. Kill a baby, a baby, innocent baby, innocent babies. Never even got a chance to stand up in life and they're dead already. Oh my God, I think it just really hurts me every time I think about it. The kind of world we're living in today. That's why the Bible says you got to follow holiness without which no man, woman, boy, or girl shall see the Lord. Holiness is an absolute, indispensable condition of salvation. We have to understand that. Holiness is not the basis of salvation. Grace is the basis of salvation. Let's not get it twisted. But holiness is the condition we are saved by grace. But you can't enter the kingdom of God without holiness. So you cannot have the one without the other. You need both oars, both oars to roll, to take your boat gently down the stream. Let the church say amen out there. Songwriter says grace, grace. God's grace. Grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace. A grace that is greater than all my sins. But God's grace, my friends, my listening friends on that stream as well, does not excuse the fact that our God is a holy God. God is a holy God. And he does expect holiness from his people. In the Old Testament, sacrificial system, on Yom Kippur, better known to us as the Day of Atonement. If the high priest passed through the veil with one spot or stain on him, my friends, you would never see him alive again. Hmm? If he entered into the most holy place with known sin, we understand that he was instantly cremated in the immediate presence of God. He had to be free from all known sin. God's people today must be in the state who will pass through the time of trouble. Who need the shield of God to protect them from the plagues of that hour and from the enemy that will be on their trail to destroy them. We have to be sealed with the seal of the living God. We have to be found without one spot or stain of known sin. And we have just an ounce of time left to become a full-fledged partaker so that the Lord can rest his seal upon us. Huh? 
to receive this divine protection before it is eternally too late. Yesterday I was speaking with a young lady at the mall. I said, I need a little trim on my hair. And she was standing there looking for business. So I went in there, not just that most day before. And anyway, one of her friends who was sitting at the table said she was a missionary. Cause I, somehow I had to let them know I was a pastor. Cause I was trying to get all of them, everybody in the shop to come to church. As people started talking about God left and right and where they are in their relationship with God. And that's how I know Jesus is coming soon. He's waking up people left and right, east, west, north, and south. Yeah. Four women in there. And all of them are talking about what they're doing in their relationship with God. They're just feeling this strong urge to draw close to the Lord. People just left and right. So y'all need to start a Bible study here. You need to start a Bible study here. You know, after hours shut down and spend an hour in here, you know, in the scriptures. And the three left, and there was one who was still talking to me. And then she shared something with me. She said, Pastor, yeah, I got my own church that I go to. And she says, it's a nice church. But she said that one day they sent me off on a missionary trip into the heart of Africa. And she said when she was out there, she saw something that she could not believe with her own eyes. She said that in that part of Africa, there were many tribes. And you know, Africa is a tribal place. She said, if an African claims that God has chosen him to be the leader of the tribe, she said, that African has to prove his worthiness. Not like Northeastern Conference when you finish your studies, the executive conference committee meets and gives you an assignment to a church. Ho, 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 not so. Mm -hmm. There's a test. He's got to pass an acid test. What is that? I said to her, what is that? She says, he has to tame a lion. Here's their rationale. He has to show that he can make the lion obey him implicitly. That means when you tell the lion, not Rover, sit down. The lion sits. Get up. The lion rises. Roar! The lion roar! And the basis of that it's because they believe. That's why I believe that the cradle of civilization began in Africa, because I think they overheard the story of the flood. They believe that God speaks to the animals. And that if God can speak to the animals, he can tell the lion to obey you, their new leader. What a test. What a test. It means that if God hasn't spoken to you, to be the leader of the tribe, and you try to put in a false claim, guess what? Mercy! Some lion, some lion would have had a very hearty meal. Because in the process of trying to prove it, the lion is going to eat you alive. you will set the lion out on you, and you have to show that God is with you. You have to, they depend in total faith on God to talk to the lion, to tame him and calm him down for you to be the leader. I wonder what would happen to the ministry today if on this side of the coast, we were subjected to that test. You know, it's serious. Especially when I thought about that, I said, wait a minute, your name is Lion now. I got a lion in my first name. Let the church say have mercy. The holiness of man. I just reviewed the holiness of God briefly, which no man can review. But you have an idea of what I'm talking about. God says, you must be holy. Why, everybody? Because I am holy. 
That means what does God want from us? It means simply that God wants every bone in your body, including all of your DNA, thoroughly and from the inside out to be stamped with this divine insignia, holiness unto the Lord. Holiness unto the Lord. This inscription we understand was engraved on the mitre. That's the hat that the high priest wore in the temple. We understand that the same inscription was seen on the reef that Enoch wore on his forehead on another planet. Holiness unto the Lord. Surrounded by precious stones, gems of different bright hues that shone like the sun, we understand, with the inscription in the center of his forehead, holiness unto the Lord. All the priests wore that band around their forehead, holiness unto the Lord, holiness. This statement is a divine dictum. It is the divine must of man, must of man. A divine imperative, holiness. I said it before. And the Baptists say it all the time, that it's either holiness or hell. It makes sense to me. It makes sense to me. To live with God, you and I have got to be holy. You talking about pastor? I mean holy in your thoughts. Holy in your words. Holy in your deeds. Holy in your dress. Holy in your diet. That means and what you put on and what you put into his living temple. Holy in the church. Holy at home. Holy on your job. Holy at school. Holy in the community where we live. Holy behind the wheel on the road. Holy on the board. You see why the angels cry, holy, 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 holy? Because our God is a holy God. And God is calling for holiness not for a holy mess. However, there is a problem. Brother Justy, it's a real question. Question, I'm not saying that you would raise, but I'm saying it's a real question. There's a problem between God and man. And here's the reality of it. I felt funny saying it, but I have to, because it's real. And people think about it. Is it really fear? And I'm not trying to be the devil's advocate. Just listen closely with both of your ears before you jump to a conclusion. Is it really fear for a righteous, holy God to expect holiness from unholy men? What do you think? Do you think it's fear for a holy God to expect holiness from unholy men. What do you think? What'd you say, sister? Okay, so we'll see you immediately following our service today. I love you to death, but uh, my door will be open at the conclusion of the service. What does the Bible teach about man? Well, the Bible teaches that man has sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible also teaches that man is unholy by nature and that God knows his frame and remembers that he is but sinful dust. And then the Bible teaches that man is born in sin and even what everybody, shapen in iniquity. 
The Bible teaches that man is alienated from God, that man is carnal with a mind not subject to the law of God, and neither indeed can it be. So then, the man that is in the flesh, we understand, cannot serve God, the Bible teaches. Again, I raise the question, what can a holy God really and truly expect from un? Holy men, I am a sinner. Is it fear? What do you think? Let me give you the answer before I get stricken. Can a man, which is the real question, can a man really live holy? Can a man fulfill God's expectations for holy living? Or is God really being unrealistic and totally unfair to man? Is God trying to drain blood out of a turnip, which will never turn up, or kiwi juice out of a cactus? What's up? What's really going on here? Well, to make a long story very short, I come to tell you today that all of God's buildings are enabling. It means that God will never ask you to do something that he has not made possible for you to do, here's the clause, in his strength. Because with God, we understand, well, everybody, that... Uh, all things are possible. We just need to learn how to claim what God has promised to do for us. It's not that it can't be done. It's that we don't take advantage of our privileges and what God is and has made available to us the resources of holiness. Well, what has God promised to us, Elder Thomas? What has he promised to us? Uh, what does a righteous God promise to do for sinful man? What can God do for me, the sinner, who can't stop committing sin? Huh? Just as ridiculous as asking a pig to stop wallowing in the mire, telling the beavers to stop building dams. Huh? Telling chickens to stop laying eggs. Huh? Telling cows to stop eating grass and huh? horses to stop chewing on hay. Huh? Just as ridiculous as telling birds to stop flying. Telling a sinner to stop committing sin. As pigs love wallowing in the mire in dirt and filth, even so do sinners like you and me, huh? like you and me, love, sin. It don't sound nice. We don't like to hear it. But just like the pig loves to wallow in the mire, loves to wallow in dirt, sinners love to wallow in their sin. This is the fatal truth of the matter. This is the realistic crux of the matter. That we can't become full-fledged partakers of his holiness because we are too deep up into our sin. It's not that he can. He don't want to cooperate. How about that? Maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's not because he can't make us holy. Maybe it's because we don't want to be made holy. We want God, but we don't want to satisfy his expectation. It's just like Lucifer. He wanted God's power. He wasn't interested in God's person. He wasn't interested in cultivating holy qualities and attributes. He was after the throne. He was after the allegiance, the homage, the obedience of the other angels. 
He was not interested in pleasing no God and being a doulos, a slave or a servant to some kind of God when he himself thought he could be God. He felt qualified to the position. Ha, I will even exalt my throne above the stars of God. And I will be like the most high. This God is corny. And if I was in control, I'd prove to the universe that I would do it better. That's why he's not dead yet. Because God is still allowing him to prove it. And look at the mess huh, that our world is in today. Because the devil is the prince of the air down here. What a foul miasma. And what a foul miasma. Oh my God. What has God promised to do for the sinner? What does a righteous God promise to do for a sinful man or sinful men like you and me? Well, the first thing that God promised his brother Justy to do for us. God says the first thing he would like to do for us is to give us a new start. It doesn't matter how many times you fall, you know, we are encouraged to keep coming. Here's one of the reason why nobody else can help you. I don't care how many times you fall. That's why the Bible says that the righteous man falls seven times. He is completely or constantly falling, but he gets back up again. Why? For the Lord upholdeth all that fall and raises back up all that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee and thou givest them their meat in due season. Repentance. Repentance. Not that it doesn't matter how many times you fall, but if you have fallen again, there's no place else for you to go. Peter says, look, if we leave you, when do you think we're going? There's no place else for me to go. Thou alone hast the words of life. There's nobody else for me to turn to, to run to, to depend on, to, to call on, but the Lord. One songwriter says, where can I go? Where can I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. But, but I found a friend who will help me till the end. Where can I go but to the Lord? I found a friend who will help me till the end. Where can I go but to the Lord? And that friend is Jesus. Never leaves you. Never forsakes you. Always willing to forgive you and give you a second chance. Brother Justin. First John 1 John 1.9. If we confess our sins. Huh? He is faithful and just. He says, I promise. He almost sounds like he's saying, I swear, but he's not going to swear. He says, they'll forgive you your sins, what? And cleanse you. You are assured of forgiveness and cleansing if you will just keep coming. Just keep coming to the foot of the cross. And hang out with Jesus, the sinner's best friend. Yes, Proverbs 28, 13 says, he that covered his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. So the first thing God promises sinful men, unrighteous men, is to give you a new start, regardless of what kind of addiction you find bad habit, vice, whatever, whatever your station is, whatever your spiritual status is, God said, I'm not, I'm not leaving you. God said, I'm not, I'm not giving up on you. As long as there's a spark of interest in me, I would like to deliver you. I would like to recover you and restore you before you close your eyes and take the sleep of death. Secondly, what else does God promise? Well, God promises the sinner, unrighteous man, unholy man. He says, I'll give you a new heart. God says, first, I'll give you a new start. Then secondly, God says, I'll give you a new heart. God says it over there in Ezekiel, chapter 36, beginning at verse 25. God says, if you turn to me, 
He says, then shall I sprinkle clean water upon you, huh? and ye shall be clean. He said, from all of your what? Your filthiness and from all your idols will I, the Lord, cleanse you. And then he says, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And he will cause you, that new spirit, to walk in my statutes, to keep my judgments, and to obey them. God said it. God said it. It will be done. God says, I'll give you a new start. Then God says, I'll give you a new heart so that the new start makes sense. A new start without a new heart does not make sense. The heart has to be renewed by the grace of God so that the new start becomes real. Then God says, thirdly, he promises to give the unrighteous man huh, a new mind. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, he says, let this what? Mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus our Lord by faith. We have to accept or receive the mind of Christ. So that we think differently. We process things differently. We perceive things differently. We register things differently. In Christ, all things become new. You don't think the same way that you used to think, always evil surmising and thinking the worst things of people. Loved ones, friends, relatives, neighbors. When the Holy Spirit comes into you and God changes your heart, you see everybody through a holy lens. You start loving people. And you can't help loving people. Not because people are perfect, but because people are people. Because they were created in the express image of God. That's why you love people. Not because they're your best friend. Not because they're good. They won't always be your best. And they won't always be any good. But we have to love them anyhow, as Jesus did, unconditionally. And the only way we can do it, the songwriter says, is to receive a heart like thine. Oh, my God. Then fourthly, what does God promise to sinful man, to unholy man? Fourthly. You're almost done here, Scott. God promises to give you a new nature. First Peter chapter, second Peter chapter one, verse four. It says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. They're exceeding great. That means they're greater than great. That by or claiming these promises, it says that you might become full-fledged partakers of what? The divine nature of God. And then it says, this is the most powerful part, Having escaped, Brother Justy, the corruption of the world or that is in this world system through lust of the flesh. God said, you got a problem with lust? You got a problem with bad habits, fierce addictions? God said to me, that's no problem. God said, give me your nature. I want to exchange your nature for mine. Your nature is lustful. It's not pure. It's not clean. It's not holy. And the saddest part of it all is that you will not be able to help yourself. Because you're born in sin, you're shaping in iniquity. When you see things that look a certain way, your nature just wants and craves and longs and yearns for things that will take you away from God's will. And you won't be able to help yourself because you're a sinner. You love sin, wallowing in the dirt, wallowing in the mire, just like a pig. But God says, when by faith you take on the divine nature, you will begin to lose the urges. Turn to the person next to you with a big smile, say, lose the urge. Huh? And let the other person on the side of you say, I done lost it. If you can. If you can. Five. God promises, and I love this one too. I love this one. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 and 57. I'm not reading all of that, but I'm just saying, God promises also to give the unholy man a new body. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, man, but that one, that one brings more relief to me than anything else. 
just to get out of this body huh? and to be in a new body. Huh? Certain thoughts don't come to you anymore. Don't plague your mind anymore. Huh? No more hot temper. No more short wicks. No more inappropriate words. No more cussing. Huh? You have a new body. You have a new mind. And you have a new place for your soul to dwell. Let the church say amen out there. A new body. Yes. For the Bible says that the trump of God will sound. And the dead in Christ shall rise immortal. And we shall be changed. That this mortal is going to put on immortality. And this corruption, incorruptibility. And so shall we forever be in that state with the Lord. Wherefore let us comfort or encourage each other with these words. Yes. God is so good. What do you say out there, church? God is so good. He wants to change us. He wants to transform us. He wants to give you a new mind, a new spirit, a new start, a new body. And all we have to do is receive it by faith. What else does God promise the unholy sinner? John 3, 6 and 7. He wants to do more than just give you a new body. He wants to give you a new birth. Jesus said, because that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Did he not say it? That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Therefore, Jesus said, marvel not. Don't be surprised or shocked that I'm saying to you that you need to be, you got to be, you must be, what everybody? You got to be born again. God says, it doesn't matter how evil, how wicked, how sinful, how busted, how disgusted you are. God says, I'm able, I am able huh, to make you over again completely. I can take you out and bring you back in as a new creature by running you through the new birth experience. When you are born again, I said, when you are born again, when the spirit of the living God comes down on you and transforms your mind, you can't think the same way anymore. Servant of the Lord says, when the spirit of God takes possession of the human sinful heart, that he transforms the life. Sinful thoughts are put away. Evil deeds are announced. Love, joy, and humility take the place of anger, envy, and strife. Nobody sees the hand that lifts the burden, nor the, nor the what? Nor the what? Quietness. Nor the what? That descends from the courts above. The light that descends from the courts above. I have to ask you three times because I couldn't remember it. Let the church say have mercy. Nor the light descends from the courts above. She says the blessing comes when by faith the soul huh, surrenders itself fully to God. Then that human I, which no human being can see, creates a new being in the image of God. That's a powerful quotation. That's a powerful quotation. Then lastly, what does God promise? The unholy man, the sinner, after you receive a new start, a new heart, a new mind, a new nature, look at all he promised, a new body, the new birth, then he promises to give you the new earth. So not only is he going to take you out of this body, but God also promises to take you out of this world. You're going to live in a new world. A world, no more sin. Huh? No more dictators. No more pontificates. No more hatred. Where the nations will study war, no more. It's going to be a new world. A new world order. A new world system with only one ruler who's going to rule this new world with a rod of iron that cannot be broken. A symbol of eternal rule. And his name is Jesus. And righteousness will preside in that new world forever. No more death. No more pain. No more sorrows. No more funeral trains. No more camps and COVIDs and, and variants and all this disgusting mess that we have to trudge through from day to day in this old world of sin. 
Question is, what do you want today? Do you want to remain as you are? Or would you like to become a full-fledged partaker of God's divine holiness? Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Is God fear in asking unholy men to be holy because he is holy? Is he fear? What do you say out there, folks? What is your answer today? After all of the information that we have reviewed from the scriptures, is God fair out there to ask us to be holy? Is it an unrealistic and unfair expectation? What do you say out there, folks? Someone once said, what are you doing in this whole world of sin? They put it this way in the words of a song. What are you seeking and what will you find? Thrills for the moment or real peace of mind? Christ is the answer that I recommend. But what are you seeking, my friend? 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 Is it truly your desire today to conform to God's standard of righteousness and of holiness? Or do you still think that God is unfair and is dealing with his creatures in calling us, huh? calling upon us to conform to his standards of true holiness and true righteousness? Songwriter says, what more could he do? What more could he do that he gave his life for you? What more could he do? What more? I'm going to ask you just right where you are, my listening friends, and those of you who are viewing by way of the stream, who understand this one thing about God. He did not come into this world in vain for naught. The Bible says that Jesus came here to give his life a ransom for many. He came here to make it possible for us to change. He came here so that we could shed our sinfulness and become full-fledged partakers of his divine righteousness and his divine holiness. He made it possible for this to happen to me and to you. But somehow by faith, we have to embrace it. We have to receive it. We have to surrender to it. And as we surrender, give him our hearts and our wills and our lives, our gifts, our talents, and our all, then God will perform a miracle for us. Yes, a miracle of love will take place in our heart the moment we surrender them fully to him at the foot of the cross. If you're all on the altar of sacrifice laid, your heart does the spirit control. You can never be blessed nor find peace and sweet rest till you yield him your full body and soul. Is that your desire today, my listening friend? Because if it is, then I'm going to ask you just right where you are to stand to your feet. To stand to your feet even now as we reconsecrate, rededicate our heart, our lives, and our all to Jesus. Sister Gray, I'm so happy to see you in the house of God today. So happy to see you that I'm going to ask you to come up here. Just obey the Lord. Take the mic and give us a prayer of consecration. This is one of the most powerful prayer warriors in our church. Let the church say so we want to encourage her. She's been through some struggles here of late. Sister Gray, come on down and take the mic and pray for us that God will rededicate and reconsecrate us all fully to his service. Thank you so much.
Let's praise God. Oh, great and dreadful God. We come now in your presence. Wretched, miserable, naked and blind, but we come. We are so grateful that your grace is sufficient for us. Amen. Amen. Lord, we yield to be yield to you, Holy Spirit. I ask you now to wash me thoroughly of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Yes, Lord. All of us. Yes. I realize that my righteousness is as filthy rags. Mm. But I come and we come. Because at the foot of the cross, at the foot of the cross, there's mercy for all of us. Amen. Amen. Father God, we seek your face this moment. We thank you that you look upon sinful man. And you were willing to come and to die in our stead. Mm -hmm. And so that sacrifice you made for us, make us know that with you, we can become the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Amen. And so God, as we come in our sinful state, we thank you that you who form us from the dust and breathe your breath in us, and allow us to become a living soul. You see fit where you created us in your image after your likeness. And so God, we want to be made whole. We want to be God focused. We want to live in a state of readiness because we see where the end of all things is at hand. And oh mighty God, yes. We come because we are in need of you. Because of ourselves, we can't do nothing. And so here we are, Lord. Here we are, need you to touch us with your transforming power. We need that transforming grace. Yes, Lord. We need, oh God, that touch that only you can give. Lord, hear our cry today. Incline your ears to us. If my people who are called by my name, you mm. said, if we would humble ourselves yes. and pray yes. and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, then you'll hear from heaven, you'll forgive our sins yes. and you'll heal our land. And when we have done this in this place, then your eyes will be open. And your ears be attentive to our prayers. Here we are, Lord. We come. We come seeking that touch. We come seeking that transformation. We come seeking God because we realize that we need you now more than ever. Yes. We're living in this sinker's earth. So many things are happening. And Lord, we have to ask ourselves the question. If Jesus should come now. Where would we be? Are, am I ready for Jesus to come? Are we ready for Jesus to come? Help us, oh God, to be God-focused and mission-focused. There are many out there who need to come to you. So help us, oh God, to get behind ourselves. Oh God, and see yourself as the pastor often said, see yourself as zero. See yourself mm, as mm, nothing. Mm. But come Jesus, Just who as can make us what he wants us to be. So here we are today, God, giving you the praise, the honor, and the glory, because God, it's only you who can make us whole. That's right. We thank That's you. Right. We thank you for the message for the, today. We thank you for the messenger. We thank you for the anointing you have placed upon him as he presents this message to us. So Lord, may we leave this place, oh God, transformed by your blood Jesus. and be shattered under your wings in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Glory to the Father. Amen. Glory Thank you so Son. much, Sister Grace.
Thank you so much. Please be seated for just a moment because we just received the word of consecration in word, but now we're going to receive a word of consecration in song before we leave, which will be brought to us by our first elder, Hollywood. Be thy name. I can't wait. God bless. I Holy, holy Lord, you're worthy, and I'm honored to sing your praise. King of glory, God almighty, hallowed be your name. All creation, that's every nation, has its being by your word. And as it is still done up in a heaven, let it be done here on earth. Let it be done on earth. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Lord and majesty. Divine authority, oh Lord, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your holy Lord and majesty, divine authority, oh Lord, hallowed be your name, your name, holy, holy, Lord, you're worthy, and I'm so honored, so honored to sing your praise, King of glory, God Almighty, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your holy name. Lord and majesty, divine authority, oh Lord, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name, and hallowed be your name, holy Lord, Lord and majesty, divine authority, oh Lord, hallowed be your name. 
Hallowed be he, hallowed be he, your holy name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all the time. Let the church praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Once again, we'd like to thank God for being who he is, a God of love, Amen. of grace, and of mercy. We thank him for the message that he has sent to us through his men servant, Pastor Martel. We thank you, Pastor, for allowing the Holy Spirit of God to use you. And let us continue to pray that the Lord will continue to minister to us through his Holy Spirit, as we have just heard, Amen. knowing that this is the only way to be in the image of God. We cannot do it by ourselves, Amen. but his Holy Spirit Amen. can do it for us. So at this time, we'd like to stand and we're going to sing our closing song. 308. 308. Thank you. Holy dang. After two. One, two. I would be dear Savior, holy dying. Teach me how, teach me how. I would do thy will, O Lord, not mine. Help me, help me now. Holy die, holy die, holy die, this is my vow. Holy die, holy die, holy die, no. What is worldly pleasure, wealth or fame? Without thee, without thee, I will live them all for thy dear name. This my wealth shall be. Holy die, holy die, holy die, this is my vow. Holy die, holy die, holy die, O Lord, just now. I have cast earth and sent joy behind. Come thou near, come thou near, in thy presence, holy in all I find, tis my comfort here, holy Lord, holy Lord, holy Lord, this is my vow, holy Lord.
Let us bow for the benediction. Our Father and our God, which art in heaven, praise be to your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for being so good to us, so faithful to us, for loving us so much that there is absolutely nothing you would not do in order to save us. Thank you for the gift of your sons. Thank you, Lord, for reaching out to us once again to let us know, Lord, we need to be holy because you are a holy God and you have shown us exactly what to do in order to be holy. We pray that you would continue to bless us, Lord, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to humble ourselves before you and to keep our eyes continually to you. We just want to thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us, all that you are looking to do for us just now, and all that you will continue to do for us. And now, Lord, unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen and amen. amen. Sabbath School at 9.15 a.m., Divine Service at 11.15 a.m., and Vespers at 4 p.m. Until next time, God bless.